The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning. 9.06 a.m. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading. You got markets in positive territory to kick things off right now, folks. You have the S&Ps up 19 points, trading at 45.90, quite a reversal overnight. When you look where we are, you're talking about lows overnight of 45.35, quite an acceleration. 3 a.m. Eastern time, things looking a little bleak. We add about 55 points to the upside right now in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, quite a rebound as well. You're talking about 250 points from 15,050. You're trading up there at 15,298 right now. You got the Dow up 112 points. Dow accelerating just near 35,000. We almost got a 34,000 print last night in the Dow. We're trading 35,373 in the Russell, catching a bid, quite a bid as well. You're talking about 37 points from the lows overnight in the Russell. Crude. 85.44, we had an 86 handle. We're gonna be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour from forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be talking about some Forex markets. I'm sure we'll be talking about crude as well. Teddy's been a crude bull for a while, crude market. Uh, tough to argue with that case. You take a look at that crude contract, my goodness. From where we were on December 2nd, 62.43, you're talking about trading up $23 since then in the price of crude. Gold contract catching a bid this morning as well. Back to a 15 minute chart. You have gold catching a bid up to 18.24 this morning. You're positive by $11. Silver quite a run yesterday, extending those gains. Silver's up 35 cents to 23.84. And notes and bonds. Quite the acceleration overnight. You trade down to 127.02. We were approaching 1.9%, I believe, the yield on the 10-year. We've pulled back a bit as we've had the market pull back a bit from its move lower. The 10-year right now trading basically flat from the close yesterday of 127.12. We jump over to the volatility index. Whoops, VIX. VIX. 2249, still a very elevated level for the volatility index for the S&P when you consider that we're coming into the open up about 20 points. But man, the market a little freaked out. Premium prices that you're going to pay for defined risk options in the S&P, yeah, you're going to be paying some premium when you have the type of volatility we do across the board right now in these markets. All right, it is bank's earnings season. Let's kick it off with Bank of America. And after some of the other banks have disappointed, Bank of America looks to trade higher on the open in 21 minutes. We got Bank of America up about two bucks at 48.36. Bank of America gets a boost from loans as consumers start borrowing again is the headline there. Average loan balances were up 1% in the fourth quarter from a year earlier. Lending has been a key focus there. We grew loans by 51 billion and added 100 billion in deposits during the quarter, further strengthening our position. That's CEO Brian Moynihan out there. Uh, they are positive, as they say there. Average loan and lease balances of $945 billion in the fourth quarter, more than the analysts who are looking for $940. Um, in sales and trading, revenue $2.9 million for Bank of America, down 2% from a year earlier. Analysts had estimated $3.1 billion. The trading boom set off by the market volatility of COVID-19 is starting to fade. Investment banking fees, how about that one? Investment banking, quite an area. 26% to 2.4 billion. Nonetheless, Bank of America trading higher on those numbers up to 4830. Stark contrast to some of how the other banks have fared on their earnings. JP Morgan most notably down $18 from where you closed out Thursday's action. They had their earnings Friday morning, $18. You're talking about a 10% haircut in the banks. Now I bring it up because, I mean the banks. Now let's, before we go through there, we also have, I believe, uh, Morgan Stanley, are they with their numbers this morning as well? Yes, they sure are. So Morgan's trading higher as well. Ekes out stock trading gain, fixed income slumps, return on tangible common equity, now seeing it more than 20%. Wealth management inflows, how about basically half a trillion dollars? Whoo, that is some wealth management inflow, man. $438 billion for the year at Morgan Stanley. Equity, equities trading revenue advanced 13%, driven by a one-time $225 million gain on investment. Um, wonder what that one-time quarter billion dollar 
gain was. That compared with analyst estimate for little change. So they got a 13% pop, probably helped by that one-time $225 million profit. And uh, in its investment bank, non-interest expenses only rose 9%, indicating compensation increases for its bankers might be less generous than at rival Goldman Sachs. So Morgan Stanley, not exactly uh, paying up for talent potentially, raised the target for return on tangible common equity, saying it now expects the metric to reach more than 20% over the long term, lifting it from the previous target of 17%. Nonetheless, you got Morgan Stanley trading higher today. You got Bank of America trading higher today. Uh, we jumped to Wells Fargo. They had been accelerating higher last week on their numbers. They are going to be trading higher today with the banks as well. City disappointed last week. They're going to get a little bit of a lift. Now, all things considered, J.P. Morgan really missed the mark here. I mean, City, you're only going to be down about a buck fifty from where you were Thursday when they came into their numbers. I mean, buck fifty, you're talking about maybe two two percent below where you were, as opposed to just like I said, J.P. Morgan, you're down about ten percent. Now I bring it up, folks, because you know banks are definitely in the human capital business, which is going up. We're seeing that happen. We're seeing it happen most notably at J.P. Morgan. But we're right at the lower end of this consolidation that we've been in at J.P. Morgan for about a year now. You're approaching 150. You're going to open today at 152.55. J.P. Morgan getting a little bit of a lift with the market. Uh, if you're not in any banks, folks, if you're looking to get in any banks, if you're looking to get in J.P. Morgan, yeah, there's nothing to say that J.P. Morgan doesn't trade down to 130 or 120, right? Maybe the cost of capital on Wall Street is just something that's going to eat through the rising yields that they're going to get uh, on their loans. But all things considered, you're getting in at 150. You're going back to prices that we basically started seeing February 22nd of 2021. So almost back a full 11 months uh, in an environment where for the first time now we're starting to hear conversations or discussions or even people entertaining a, the idea that we might get a 50 basis point hike come March. March wasn't even in play. Now March is in play. Now we might get 50 basis points hikes in March. I don't imagine that's coming, folks. Uh, Chairman Powell is not in the business of freaking out the market. His thesis is that we are still in a transitory period, even though he wants to expel that transitory word. Okay, He expects inflation to abate over the course of this year. Now, transitory has many meanings to many people, which is why he specifically said that almost that exact phrase that we should probably... Um, Expire, retire that word, excuse me, uh, in terms of transitory. But he believes right now that the factors in play have caused inflation to last longer than they have. And he's been pretty forthcoming with his feelings that those influences do. Uh, he explained to me, and I don't expect him to shock the market. I don't think we're there. We're just yet. People make very good cases that we are. OK, but I don't think Chairman Powell agrees that we're there just yet, which is the key. Uh, Nonetheless, rates are going up. JP Morgan down at 151. I mean, you're talking about what is that? You're down $20. You're down a solid almost 12% from the highs that we were at just a couple months ago, let alone getting into the bottom consolidation area uh, to kick things off the where you've been for the last year. Not bad. When you're looking at an area that growth stocks have been pummeled, man, some of the stocks in particular, whew, you're looking for some action on some of these growth stocks. We got to be getting to an area that you at least can start a partial position. Uh, Roku. We're back to the highs that we had of 2019, okay? Pulling back from 490 to 166. Salesforce, we have in my newsletter, quite a pullback to 226. These growth stocks, we'll talk a little bit more about them. Zoom is in that bucket as well. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up about 17 points. NASDAQ 100 up about 78 points, pulling back a bit from the highs that we had just a few minutes ago. But all things considered, saving itself, you should could say from the lows, was not up last night between 2 and 3 in the morning. Thankfully, I wake up this morning and say, hey, you know what? We got a rebound in the market. Looks like the market was done trading lower yesterday. I missed the fun last night. A uh, little bit scary action. If you're a bull there, uh, as in you see the market accelerating lower after the day we had yesterday. But guess what, folks? We're going to find out in about 12 minutes when this market opens where supply equals demand. All right, speaking of pay, so JP Morgan, we've been talking about there's your fall off on their earnings. One of the things that it had to do with was the cost of human capital eating into their earnings. And it comes out again, JP Morgan, they're going to raise the salaries for junior bankers a second time. I mean, all things considered, folks, if you get an analyst position at JP Morgan, you're probably doing something right. You've probably put some investments and in serious, serious investments into your education. Uh, and they're jacking that up to 110 from 100,000, according to people familiar with the matter. Second year analyst, 125. Third year, 135. Salaries in the markets unit will also see similar jumps. Um, not bad. First year, 110K. The thing I'll say is that in the environment we're in, being a junior banker at JP Morgan Chase, and company is obviously an elite position that is very hard to come by. And 110000 is quite a premium salary. But all things considered, folks, with the cost of everything going up, with the cost of housing right now, with the cost of housing where J.P. Morgan does business, like in New York, yeah, you better believe they had to jack it up. I mean, they weren't even making six figures. And, you know, I know people, many people, making six figures would be quite a luxury. All right, but when you're talking about the, the elite position somebody is in to achieve that job, you know, where they've been in life, the investment in their own education that they've made and the value that they represent to that company, which is the key, okay, the value they represent to the company in terms of what they deserve for pay because the value they're bringing to the table. I would argue that somebody who's landing a first year investment banking analyst position at JP Morgan Chase uh, probably deserves value of at least $110,000 with the amount of money that that company brings in on an annual basis. Second year, 125. So what is that? That's 15K on top of there. Not a bad raise. You're talking about just over 10% uh, raise and then you're getting a 10K. So then it, it pairs a bit into the third year. But point being, this is what's happening on the bank numbers here in a big way. That's the reason that you just traded from 170 to 151. And uh, just since the last few minutes, I don't know what just happened, but JP Morgan, you were up to one. 
No, they still got a bid ask above 152. Okay, I'm not. There was just a print. Yeah, there you are. You're back to positive prices on JP Morgan. Yeah, but nonetheless, pay going up. And not surprising there. The jump comes after news that Citi is increasing pay for junior investment bankers in the U.S. after their division posted its best performance on record. Base salaries for first year analysts, guess how much? 110K. Second year and third year will now receive 125. I mean, what a game, right? You're seeing the inflation play out right here, okay? What happens? Citigroup jacks their pay, first year 110, second and third 125. JP Morgan was only at 100K for the first year, right? They're not gonna get passed up by City like that, okay? So what do they do? So they say, ah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna inch them out a little bit. We're gonna pay 110 the first year, we're gonna pay 125 the second year, then we're going to pay 135 the third year instead of 125. That's how inflation creeps in, folks, and that's how it creeps in in a big way. Because if you think about it, prior to COVID, I believe they were making 90K. They weren't making 100K because the first rise was to 100K. The second one was to 110. So let's just say they were making 90K. You just went up to 110K. That's a 20 thousand dollar raise for somebody making ninety thousand dollars a year let alone the jump they're getting in the second year to 125 okay so you just went from 90 to 110 that is a 21 22 percent raise in your pay i mean you're seeing it folks that is a raise in pay that's going to get used by consumers in the market that's going to contribute to rising costs of food shelter all of the likes i mean in florida right now we are seeing real estate prices rising 20 plus percent a year. I mean, they're expected to rise another 20 plus, 20, 25 percent, something silly uh, in the next year. Well, you can't do that if everybody's making the same amount of money, folks. And what is happening in Florida is we have an inflow of people from big cities making big money that now have the ability to work from home in some capacity, uh, some more than others. And you're seeing that play out. But pretty startling when you're seeing these banks. Now, the reason I bring it up, and I just wanted to harp on it again, because even myself, talking about retirement money, et cetera, we have no positions in banks right now in my newsletter, and we might initiate one even this week. I mean, this action, JP Morgan, there's no stronger bank than JP Morgan on Wall Street, folks. And you're getting in at basically the best price that you can over the last 11 months. Think about where rates were, okay? In an environment, we're approaching 1.9% in the 10 year. We're having three to four rate hikes coming this year. We got three to four, maybe the year after that. If you're worried about potentially being overloaded on growth stocks, NASDAQ 100, you know, having some exposure to some nice bank stocks might not be a bad deal if you are talking about retirement, talking about capital preservation, right? You're not going to get some kind of crazy triple bagger on JP Morgan. They're not going to finish out the year, um, you know, multiples higher. OK, but what they are going to do is they're a solid company in a rising rate environment right now that just got a pullback of about 10 percent when we saw yields rise. I mean, you almost can't state it right. We're negative on the year at J.P. Morgan so far. And we just had the 10 year rise from one point five to one point nine percent. It's probably going to two percent sometime soon. So take that for what it's worth. Um, but I have my eye on that bank sector because, man, it seemed like you missed out on the run to start off the year when they all accelerated higher. It might be a little bit of a buying opportunity with a pullback. Now, what I will say is pretty remarkable that Wells Fargo looks to be the leader right now. Uh, Wells Fargo starts off last year at 48 bucks. You're already up $8. You're already up, what, 16 17% for Wells Fargo to start off the year when you got a company like J.P. Morgan down 10% or so. You are now above where you were trading coming into COVID for Wells Fargo, and you back things up as long as we go. You're approaching highs of 60 bucks. Now, that's going to be the critical area. That was an area of resistance. We hit it back in 2015. We hit it back in 2017, got above that area briefly in 2018, hit that area again in September of 2018. And then the car carnage really began in December of 2019. Quite a fall off, but quite a rebound. And Wells Fargo looks to be one of the strongest ones out there of the banks as they beat on their earnings, traded higher on Friday to 58.87 and higher today as well to 57.45. All right, these markets giving back some of the gains right now. You got the S&P up about 15 points. You're still a solid 50 points above where we were last night, man. Uh, thank goodness that market saved itself. Things looking a little bleak overnight. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. As we got the NASDAQ 100 giving it up a little bit. We're up 60 points right now. Yeah, Amazon giving it up a bit. We're still, uh, no, we're barely flat right now as Amazon shares. Microsoft, the big deal for Activision Blizzard yesterday. We're trading at 307. Interesting action that Microsoft, uh, not too much of a give back on price. Investors kind of happy with that purchase of $70 billion of Activision Blizzard. ATVI is their symbol. Now, this one's an interesting one as well. They're buying Activision Blizzard for $95 a share. 
the market not quite sure that's going to get done right now. Quite a gap there from 82 to 95 if you think it's going to get done. I mean, this is where, and I do not advise this trade. I would not make this trade. I don't think it's probably a profitable trade um, because the market is assigning the risk that it assigns to the probability that this deal gets done. If it does not get done, Activision probably trades back to 65. So what's your risk? Your risk is about 17 bucks to the downside, okay? And if it gets done, you got about 12 bucks to the upside. So you're risking 17 to make 12. You're risking about $3 to make two. Uh, you got to be right 40% of that time to make that trade. So that's saying that the market has about a 60% probability that this deal gets done for Microsoft, Activision, Blizzard. Interesting. Yet Sony selling off big. Uh, in Asia last night as they got a new competitor on the block with Microsoft, number three in gaming in the world. We'll talk a little bit more about that deal when we get back with Microsoft. We'll be right back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open. We get the S&Ps up about 18 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up about 80. Dow up 130 right now. Russell up about 13 points. You got crude trading at 85.72. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstaff from forex-trading-unlock.com coming up in the next segment. We got gold up $11. Gold catching a bid up to 8. 1824 near the higher range that we had last week going on we jumped to the vix as we got a positive market to open things up the vix still elevated though pretty interesting right you got the vix right near the highs of yesterday right now market not willing to back down the premium that they want um 
in this market, especially in the S&P, which is what the VIX is predicated off of, not willing to back down on the premium with the type of volatility we're getting basically on a daily basis right now, one way or the other, been negative territory recently. So let's jump back to Microsoft shares, see how they're opening this morning. They're up about 1.15%. You're trading higher by $3.50. I talked about it yesterday. Now, Microsoft... They've got 7.5 billion shares outstanding for this company. So basically, it's about a $9 or $10 move is what represents what they paid for Activision Blizzard. They're going to become the number three gaming company in the world. Uh, and they're going to use Call of Duty, along with many other games, to basically push them to the further point of the metaverse. Now, how they spin that out, they were talking about whether it's buying games, um, spending in games, right, controlling that ecosystem of Xbox Live. A lot of the Activision Blizzard games were tailored towards Xbox Live that they could play multiplayer games like Call of Duty specifically. Uh, Microsoft did come out and say that they're not going to cut off production for those games for some PlayStation games that are available just because they bought it. They still want that revenue. They're going to be a gaming company, Activision Blizzard. Uh, you're going to have that company reporting to the head of gaming from Microsoft. You probably have the CV CEO of Activision Blizzard staying on until the deal is done. He will then step out after collecting like $375 million payday. Not bad. Uh, but Microsoft talking about part of this deal, uh, the the turmoil going on at Activision Blizzard presented them an opportunity. And, and they didn't miss it, man. They got in there and they got it done. I mean, look at this pullback. I wonder when they started the talks. Because I imagine this slide from 100 down to 60 started making them think. I mean, you're back to pre-COVID levels of February 20th, Activision Blizzard. Now, they have all sorts of problems going on uh, with the environment OK, that is going on at that company. But that's the reason why they got quite a haircut here. You're talking about not even getting it at the highs that they traded at at last year. Ninety five dollars a share. Basically, they, they got the middle of the range that you were trading at in the middle part. Uh, excuse me, in the beginning of last year near highs. But interesting that the market right now is pricing in. I mean, I just did the math, right? You're talking about basically only a 60 percent chance this deal gets done at the price it's at. I wonder how antitrust is going to come into things. Tech companies overall have been in the sites pretty largely, uh, and I'm a proponent of regulation for some of these tech companies when the, they control the data they do. But I don't see how this deal is completely monopolistic. Uh, I really don't in terms of antitrust concerns. Um, you know, they're going to be the number three gaming company in the world. Microsoft's got plenty of competition. They got plenty of competition coming down the line for virtual reality. Um, all for the Justice Department stepping in when antitrust concerns are present. Just on the forefront, as a layman that understands things basically, yeah, Microsoft's going to become a much bigger company. And they're already a pretty big company. But guess what? You have companies like PlayStation. You have companies like Apple coming out with their own VR headset. You have companies like Facebook and Meta coming out with ramped up versions of their VR headset probably early next year in addition to Oculus Quest 2. So, yes, you're going to hear the argument that it's going to hurt consumers, okay? And we'll see how those arguments play out. And I'll be interested to hear the arguments they make of how it may hurt consumers because bottom line is anytime you have a combination of companies that maybe are in the same arena okay yes you can make the argument that there might be less competition okay because now you got microsoft controlling the games they make for the platform they own etc but guess what folks there's plenty of big players in that market so there's plenty of competition that microsoft is going to have in the gaming sector as they're the number three player in that sector and like i said when it comes to vr apple's going to be in the mix in a big way they're not quite a gaming company right now and they may be become one of the biggest gaming companies out there when they push out a vr headset uh and then how do they do that do they buy gaming netflix is getting into gaming as well right you can see how the arguments may play out that it may be pretty difficult to prove antitrust concerns when you get some of the biggest tech companies in the world they're going to love to get into gaming because gaming is going to be VR. VR is going to be metaverse. Metaverse is going to be the future. I mean, it's that simple. And that's a nice little segue. Let's see how meta is trading. Up about 7 tenths percent right now. You're trading at 320. Facebook just chopping around at that 50 percent mark of where we were in terms of the acceleration. Going back to March of 2021, you go from about $250, 255 to 384. We're back to about 320 for Facebook shares. We'll jump over to Tesla on a three-year weekly basis. Holding up relatively well. We'll put it back on a daily. 
uh, relatively well over the thousand mark, right? You only traded down below a thousand in the middle of December for one point. Since then, yeah, you briefly were down below that level on January 10th. But all things considered, with the way the market's been trading, Tesla holding up pretty well, all things considered. My dad sent me an article this morning. Haven't had a chance to read it yet. I read a portion of it talking about Kathy Wood. And yeah, her outperformance is fading quickly uh, with ARC when you're betting on the biggest companies in the world and they are struggling to say the least to kick off this year and into last year. I mean, you're now at levels, right? Where you're talking about, I mean, it's still quite a gain. Okay, you're talking about from the beginning of 2019. So the last two years, you would have gone from about $50 to $80. What's that? $30. That's about a 60% profit over the period of two years. I think that would probably still be beating the market over that time. But quite a far cry from where you were at the end of 2020 when she was a rock star of all rock stars. Uh, made some transitions to some stocks that did not work out. I mean, we've heard all of them, right? You had Zillow was a big one in her portfolio. Uh, they really got out of whack in terms of 2020, in terms of 208. They got out of the house fixing business, and uh, flipping business, excuse me, back in November. And we're approaching even lower levels from there. What's the low we're talking about? 52.57 is the low. We're trading at 54.30 so far this morning for Zillow. Uh, she was in Zoom, I believe. Tough year for Zoom getting over there. She got out of Tesla. Probably wishes she stayed in Tesla last year as Tesla went from 716 to close up, excuse me, close out the year for 1,048. I think she got out of most of the Tesla position at least. Um, but nonetheless, when you live and die on these growth companies, man, I mean, you know, and I, I'm not as familiar with some of her positions in these, but it doesn't, you know, you, anywhere you go, some of these growth companies, Roku catching a little bit of a bid today. But, man, you're talking about 171. You came into COVID at a price point of 130. I mean, the world has changed a lot since then. And, man, you're barely up in the positive. And you want to talk about the poster boy case for uh, runs and demises, Peloton. I was talking about friends and about Peloton. The scary thing about Peloton, right, is you could say, okay, we are back to prices before COVID. Okay, you were trading at $37 in 2019. There are people in Peloton that are down almost 20% on their investment, and they purchased those shares in December of 2019. That almost just doesn't seem fair, but the market ain't fair, man. They uh, did a very poor job of forecasting what was going to happen to demand. They ramped up their production, they had, what, four-month waits sometimes for the bike during the pandemic. They ramped up all the production. Demand wanes. They have all this extra production. They have rising costs. They have decreasing demand. They had a problem with their treadmill they had to recall. Point being, don't just think that you are back to pre-pandemic prices on this one and you'll be okay. Because if the pandemic hadn't begun, they'd probably be higher than they are right now. Which is a real statement to mismanagement when you think about the opportunity they had. Uh, they ramped it up at the wrong time. And yeah, you're back at 30 bucks for Peloton shares. You're still talking about quite a valuation, but back at 30 bucks from 171. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Teddy Kegstad. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow up 136 points right now. You look at the S&P trading higher. You're up 28 points right now. That's six tenths percent. NASDAQ up seven tenths percent. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every trading day, folks, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. We talk a little Forex. We talk a little commodities. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning. We got a lot to talk about today. Boy, it seems like every week, man, we got big action happening between Wednesday and Wednesday when we talk, Teddy. Um, quite the markets we have across the board. Where do you want to kick things off, man? Um, well, why don't we start with the uh, the oil market? So we have Ooh. oil that made a little bit higher move high today. It's pretty much unchanged on the day. So I think you're going to keep on seeing this, you know, pressuring on resistance and trying to break out to the upside. I believe that that trend is going to stay intact, you know, right now with everything that's going on globally. Boy, it's, it's a pretty remarkable trend, man. Uh, 85.74, I got light, sweet, crude up here. And you're actually above now, Teddy, uh, you know, where you were in terms of October highs, November highs, mm -hmm. quite the surges <clears throat> from 62 bucks. Put it on, you know, a weekly, no matter what you put it on, man. It's like this thing is just going through the roof right now. I go back five years, we're at highs, but you got to back mm -hmm. it up to that monthly. And it seems like all but considered, next stop's 100. I mean, you're going back into on my chart. I have it up on a monthly, Teddy, right now, going okay. back to, geez, 1999. But that sure. fall off in 2014, where things really went from 107 bucks uh, mm -hmm. a barrel down to 52 as in we're basically in that land now that we haven't seen those prices since we were there and seems like right. we might run up i mean on my chart you know being a mm -hmm. technical trader to some degree seems like next stops 100 bucks man as you're through everything that stands in its way right the technicals and the fundamentals are definitely pushing that way it's hard to be a bear you know so yeah. that's for sure so yeah. um but uh, why don't we we'll talk about how that's going to influence a couple of the currency markets as we bounce around the Forex world. Um, I think the biggest news, though, I don't know if you're aware of it. I just saw the video um, Boris Johnson's speech about the whole uh, removal of all mask mandates is going to be huge. Um, okay. It starts tomorrow. So the British pound probably is getting a little leg up right now on the against the dollar from that news. I mean, most okay. people probably haven't heard it yet. Um, I yeah. watched the speech. It was pretty amazing. Like and the uh, ovation in Parliament Parliament and the people screaming when they heard the mass mandate is ending as of tomorrow. So, okay. I mean, you could, they, they still say you should wear it and blah, blah, blah. But they said sure. there's no more persecution and whatever. And the biggest thing he said, all kids go to school, no mass. All people okay. go back to work. Don't work from home. Go back sure. to work. So that's big. They want to jumpstart their economy. They yeah. want to throw UK back, and they're like, "Hey, Omicron's over." They're like, "We got to live with it. We're moving on." You know, I yeah. mean, Japan, did, Japan did it in December. The UK now. Remember, the UK is not part of the EU anymore. This is, sure. You're not getting this narrative from the EU. You're getting the complete opposite still. Yeah. You know, I mean, Germany yeah. is still a hard line. You know, Italy's very hard line. You know. Yes. So um, now the question is: Is this going to keep on? 
it's you're seeing it more and more. I mean, Mexico lifted their mandate on um, COVID uh, requirements, so now you can go to and from Mexico just like you can travel in the U.S. Now they don't care. Okay, you know. So now this is yeah. big for the economies, you know. And this gets back to the currencies. So the dollar right now, we had a big bounce on Friday for a lot of the um, currencies with the versus the dollar, meaning dollar strength. Like when we talked last week. The yen was pretty strong. It got hit hard over the past few sessions after we spoke. You know. Yes. Yep. So, I got and it you know, there. you yeah. know, I've been, you know, I've been long for a while. You know. So, um, but uh, now it's 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 coming back. You know, and dollar strength. We had a lot of buy signals <clears throat> and sell signals in ver- ver- various currencies. So when the dollar index on Friday set a uh, buy signal, that also touched off the euro, which was then giving it, you know, a sell signal, and then we had it in the pound. Okay. So now that was coming into into play now. I think this news with the UK could put the brakes on this on this move with the uh, British pound. So the British okay. pound could become a very raging bull in the long term. You know. So in fact, I can give you I'll give you guys a price target on that one. GBP USD. Um, so right now we have a little bit of a reversal going. Like I was looking for it to correct down to the 134.51 area, 133.83 area. But with this okay. news. With this new news, this could totally change everything. Okay, so today's close, if we see the British pound US dollar continue to press through resistance today and settle where it's at now or a little higher, if we get follow through over the next couple of days, I think you're gonna see a big, big, big change in the momentum of that currency. I mean, I'm right now looking at it as to be bearish right now, not bullish, you know, but this news I think is gonna change everything around. So I'd be very cautious if you're a short the British pound US dollar, be very mindful of the high from last week because if we get above that, Long term, I think that's a big significant tone on what's going to happen with the pound versus the dollar. Now, this won't be the same for the euro US dollar. I think the euro is going to be a totally different place. So, where the pound is going to probably be strong, we're not going to see it in the euro. The Swiss, I think, is really going to stay choppy for the next like week or so on this news, too. You know, now with the US dollar yen, especially with oil riding the highs, which also supports the pound. I think that the U.S. dollar yen trade probably is going to continue to get a pop because I don't know if you watched the 10 year and the 30 year over the past couple of days, but especially yesterday, they hammered the lows. Yeah. You know, they're pretty much unchanged today. So but this is this is a big deal, you know, as far as the currency pricing. Remember, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, I said that I think that we're going to start to see a lot of divergence in the Forex markets where the dollar index is no even though I think the dollar is overall a versus many currencies not versus like the pound now I think the pound has okay. a potential with because of the narrative that's going on now you know what I mean so sure. and, and that's where I think we're looking at a, a totally we're coming into this fluctuation part part so any of your people that are out there that are trading the Forex markets be mindful of the trends some of them may get disrupted we may start to see a turn where long term I was looking for you know uh, the pound euro at least to be pretty much sideways you know maybe not necessarily lower but not a bull now I'm reversing my whole like thought process on it because between the you know interest rates what you'd think would have neutralized the oil effect with the pound but now that they're lifting mandates and that everyone's going to go back to work and they're going to be firing on all cylinders that's a big deal they're going to open up all the factory everything's going back online as of tomorrow you know like that's major major news so there are all sure. their economic numbers are going to change over the next couple of months you know and you got to remember England, the UK is one of the epicenters for Forex trading. You know, the yeah. pound is one of the biggest traded currencies out there. Don't think that these currency traders nice. in the UK as of today are being like, whoa, we got to change our whole <laughs> perspective on the different crosses with the pound versus the yen, the pound versus the dollar, pound versus the euro, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so it is, um, it is pretty yeah. cool, man. You make great points. I was just going to jump in and say, because I, I was thinking about this morning today, I was reading an article about China in general and just their whole approach to zero COVID cases and how that's kind of come back to bite them um, with Omicron and the spread and how they can't contain it. And now they're dealing with mm-hmm. problems that they don't have any type of, you know, immunity, their vaccines are not as effective. And now they're trying to contain it and they can. And it just made me think of how countries are going to come out of this. And like, for instance, China was so ahead of the curve early on, right? They just right. basically took everyone's freedom, locked it down, got rid of COVID and tried to live without it. Now, 
turns out, as many people said, you can't really do that because we're going to have to live with it. And so that right. just made me start thinking, like you're saying, where we're and I'm, you know, you know, we're in Florida, man. And mm-hmm. I don't agree with a lot of what Florida did. But the cool part is, mm-hmm. is that it's almost hard for me to understand some of the lockdowns still going on in the country and especially overseas, sure. man. We talked about Australia, stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, it's time to come out of this, man. We're two years right. into it. Right. So yeah, it'd be interesting absolutely. to see what absolutely. country comes out how and how that fares, man. Well, Teddy, I appreciate the update as always, man. That was a great take. We'll watch that pound, and uh, right. we'll talk to you next week. As always, man. Take care. Thanks a lot. You too, Teddy. Take care. Thanks so much. Folks, check them out every trading day. Forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be right back. Finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets rising a bit right now. We get the S&Ps up 26 points. NASDAQ up 133 points. When you put it on a daily, though, still quite a pullback from where we were. You're talking about 208 points from where the S&Ps were trading at just January 4th, just more than two weeks ago. Quite the pullback. And on a, a talking about, I've brought up these trend lines many times. So if you take a look at the S&P, as you can see, right from the bottom area, we have not got below that trend line yet and yeah you know you're touching on two different areas maybe on three you pull up the cues a little bit cleaner trend line in terms of where you were at coming off of basically when we started to get the vaccine efficacy numbers in november of 2020 
first pretty decisive break below that level. We'll see how they react to getting a little bit of a boost today. But again, quite a pullback from where we were at 400 on the queues to start off the trading year. All right. So we talk about the vaccines. We talk about, you know, eliminating mass mandates, getting back to real life. A lot of parts of living in Florida I enjoy greatly during this pandemic, even though I cannot stand uh, Mr. DeSantis and the way he's handled a lot of things. Um, but this one, pretty startling, folks. We can live in a world where we, you know, open things back up. We have reason. But this one just blows my mind. You get the Department of Health confirming that uh, the Orange Cult Department of Health employee uh, at the helm, the medical director of Orange County, basically put on hold because he encouraged his staff to get vaccinated, folks. I mean, that's the simplicity of it. It really is. And getting into what he said, okay, you can encourage vaccines without having vaccine mandates, folks. All right, we're going to get to the point in Florida that our health officials can't even encourage people to get vaccinated. All right, he wrote to his staffers that only out of 568, 77 received boosters, 219 got two shots, and only 34 had a single dose. I mean, folks, that's about 58% of his staff. And his quote was, I'm sorry, but the absence of reasonable and real reason, it is irresponsible not to be vaccinated. We've been at this for two years. We're the first to give vaccines to the masses, and we've done more than 300,000, and they're not even at 50 percent in terms of talking about it's a bummer and what, what do they do he gets put on leave to, to see whether he did anything illegal as a health official encouraging his employees to get vaccinated folks get out there and get vaccinated it's safe it's effective all right and uh yeah we're opening back up this is just about protecting you protecting those around you uh very unfortunate if we're not going to be able to have health officials anymore that believe in the health of their employees and citizens in florida we can open up and do it all reasonably folks stay tuned we got our man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up live, folks. We'll be right back.